WSO2 identity server in-house. So we use WSO2 identity server in-house to provide single sign-on, centralized identity management, and multi-factor authentication. And these are the challenges and some of the decisions that we made during the process. Right. So um, identities in WSO2 ecosystem falls onto main three, three main categories. We have employees. We have to manage their identity. We have customers. Then we have open source community, which is like in the range of thousands. So we need to manage identi identities of all these three types of people. I'll run through it using a st user story. So this is Edgar. He joins WSO2 as an engineering. He has an engineering graduate. So we need to provision him to certain different systems as opposed to a salesperson joining WSO2. So um, in general, when a person joins WSO2, the infra team provision him to the internal LDAP and Google Apps. And for other systems, they are provisioned as and when required. For example, when Edgar joins the support team, the support manager provisions him for the PMT, which is the time reporting system in WSO2, and support Jira. And when Edgar sells sign up to WSO2.com, he gets access to the, uh, uh, .com Jira, which, which is our open source community Jira. So right now, the provisioning of employees happens like this. Let's take a, uh, so let's see the deployment of uh, the, the, this is the Q3 deployment. This is what we had in 2015. So we had one big LDAP. In this one big LDAP, we had uh, OU for all the users, both employees and open source community and customers. Everybody is in the same OU. But employees are maintained in a different LDAP, and they are synced into the external LDAP uh, periodically. So all the internal systems, all possible internal systems are connected to the internal LDAP. So that em employees use the same password for these systems. So they are Redmine, NetSuite, PMT, Support Portal, App Manager. So all of these systems use the same username password. It's much better than a normal random username password scenario, but still there are some improvements that we can do. And there were two systems. Conquer and People HR that were on the table discussing. They were not in use, but they are both cloud systems. So if you are going to provision Edgar into those systems, he will either have to remember two additional passwords, or we will have to sync our LDAP up to the cloud, which we are not prepared to do so. We don't want our employees' username passwords in some other cloud provider's LDAP. Uh, so if Edgar wants to blog, he has to remember another password, uh, which is the WordPress password. And if he wants, uh, if he is doing some sales-related stuff, he'll be provisioned into Salesforce. And if he has to remember another password, so there are a total of five passwords that a person has to remember in WSO2. Usually it's four because engineering people don't do sales, and salespeople don't do. Um, blogging. So it's four passwords, right? So let's look at Cathy. Cathy belongs to the other category, where she's an open source developer. She's from abct.com. She's interested in um, WSO2 products. So she goes to Oxygen Tank and signs up, which she, uh, she goes to WSO2.com and signs up, which gives her a Oxygen tank sign into Jira, so she can create stickers and so on. When she becomes a customer, she gets an invitation mail. When she clicks, what happens is uh, underlying API is called, and she is provisioned into sub support Jira as a client under abc.com project. So she can create support tickets 
against WSO2 employees. So that is, so this is the internal deployment. This is the public side of it. So um, uh, if a person uh, becomes a client, he has access to support Jira, OT Jira, that's the whole open source community has access to, and WSO.com site, anybody can access. So everybody shares uh, the same LDAP and credentials. Drupal is where we run our WSO.com website. So we decided we need to uh, vamp up our identity story with four main objectives. Password exhaustion was not on the list, but these were the main objectives of, of redesigning identity of WSO2. So we wanted to come up with the best possible enterprise identity solution there is using WSO2 identity server. Then we wanted to centralize, do centralized identity management where we provide single sign-on and centrally manage the identity of a person, attributes and attribute values. We wanted to use provisioning in place of syncing. And uh, we needed to define the concept of one person. Right now, our LDAP is based on uh, the person's email address. If you change the email address, your identity gets changed. You can't go back to the person you were. Uh, if you had created 20 uh, tickets on OT Jira as uh, uh, Fatima at uh, gmail.com, if you change it to Fatima R, now you are in a bit of a tricky situation. You, your whole history is lost. So we needed to get rid of that. Then we needed to do, introduce multi-factor authentication for Google Apps. That's the other objective that we wanted to achieve. Because we preach about uh, multi-factor authentication and everything, but we don't use it in-house. So that's where we wanted to get to. Right? So, um, so let me uh, briefly touch on that, what WSO2 Identity Survey is. WSO2 Identity Survey is a identity and entitlement management uh, server. So um, it supports many standards like uh, for SSO and federation. We have uh, SAML2, OpenID Connect, and for delegations, we have OAuth, OAuth2 support, and um, WS Trust. There are many connectors for e existing uh, cloud providers. You can find them at store.wsd.com. So uh, you can find many connectors somewhere around 12. So we are working on improving it. So uh, uh, it has user and groups management, user and groups provisioning, and multiple user store support, uh, JDBC, LDAP, uh, when it comes to LDAP, we, can s we have tested with open LDAP, uh, Apache uh, directory, that's the inbuilt LDAP that we ship, not recommended for production use. Uh, Microsoft AD, so we have tested with all of these LDAPs. And um, you can set password policies, account locking capabilities, and we have role-based uh, access control and SACML-based access control. So single sign-on. Um, so we all know single sign-on is supported by a trusted third party. So why did we want to have single sign-on? I mean, all our employees had only four passwords to worry about. They are probably not suffering from password fatigue. Uh, <laughs> but still we wanted single sign-on because our primary objective was to use identity server in-house, dog food identity server. Use it ourselves and see how it works. And but in a, in a big s uh, enterprise environment where there, are, where there are like 20, 30 systems, password fatigue is a very common phenomena. So SSO would solve the problem. You can't connect everything to a single LDAP. We wanted to have central control of identity. So how would uh, SSO improve uh, the security? Because you uh, put all the security or the, you store the password at the trusted third party, right? So you can put encryption, hashing, everything there, and all of the other applications don't have to worry about it. So they just have to worry, trust the token issued by the trusted third party, 
and work on it. So that would reduce work on the applications as well. Less things to worry about. No locking. No, don't have to worry about uh, mm, DOS attacks. All of those things. So SAML 2. SAML 2 is a Op OSIS open standard established in 2005. It's a XML-based assertions, and it's widely supported by many service providers. Service providers are applications. IDP is the identity provider, the base of identity server. So when we looked at our uh, application list, we found that almost everybody supported SAML2. So it was really easy. We didn't have to worry about uh, writing client or modifying the codes in those applications. So SAML2 uh, basically follows the same model. When you are trying to access an application uh, where SSO is enabled, say if you if we switch on um, SSO to Jira and you visit Jira, it will redirect you to idp.wcd.com or the identity, identity server. You enter the username password there or authenticated by any other means that is required, and then they are redirected back to the application with the token, right? And the next time you visit another application, your browser has the cookie. You don't have to re-authenticate with the identity server. It will issue the token trusted to the application. So same principles, but work on XML. So, um, so the main argument when configuring SSO in this uh, WSO2 uh, environment was, are we going to manage a single LDAP and a single identity server? Because we have different types of identities. We have employees, we have open source community, we have customers, right? So e wha uh, what are we doing? Are we doing the correct thing? That was the main question. Then we uh, did a little bit of research and found out there are many differences between these identities. Scale. Customers, a company can have thousands and hund hundreds and thousands of customers, right? But while employees is somewhere around 1,000, 100 range. So scale is completely different when it comes to customers and employees. The other thing is, uh, Who's controlling the identity? When it comes to enterprise identity, it is controlled by the organization. But when it comes to customer identity, you are not in control. They can delete the account. They can do whatever. And when it comes to self-signed customer identity, you cannot control, OK, if you are going to buy a product from me, you must, be, you must give me the correct age. You can't have rules like that. The data is. Uh, low assurance, unproved, and just enough to get your job done. So there's a vast difference between employee identity and client identity, right? So different focus areas. Client identity is driven by market. UX, you have to be very careful uh, about the user experience. You have to require minimal identity. And while employee identity is different. So due to all of these reasons, we decided to break up our IAM program into two. One is employee identity. The other one is uh, client identity. Right? So this is the first cut of this. This is the first design that we came up with. We have two identity servers, one for internal identity systems, the other one for external systems. So and we break down the LDAP into two. Internal em employees are in a separate LDAP. External LD uh, employees are in another LDAP. So external systems are connected. External identity server is connected to uh, external LDAP. Internal identity server is connected to internal LDAP. Right? So that's the initial design. But we had to um, uh, sync the employee or the, the uh, uh, name to the external LDAP to make support Jira work because our, in our support Jira we check groups and it works on the LDAP. We, because of that we had to, without the credentials, we just uh, sync the 
internal employees to the external LDAP without the credentials. Okay, so the other thing that we wanted to achieve was the notion of one person. Right now, our identity is completely dependent on the email address. We wanted to change that. We wanted a person to be able to change his email address and still retain his old data. This is not for employees. This is for non-employees. This is for open source community, right? So for that, we restructured our LDAP such that the UID is an auto-generated auto UUID. So it's not being visible to outside world. The UUID is the UID of the internal LDAP. And you can change your email address, add several email addresses. You can change the color of your hair and you still be Fatima, right? So that was the objective. Eventually, when we are providing uh, authentication, we can provide, a person can have several attributes. And given a several unique attributes, we can track back to his person object in the LDAP. OK. So um, that was the objective of uh, LDAP restructuring. And in comes the challenge of provisioning users. We also wanted uh, auto-provision users to Google Apps, Conquer, and external LDAP. And we also wanted to auto deprovision users. So this is the external LDAP uh, that we I was talking about because we wanted to give access to the support Jira. Support Jira reads groups from the external LDAP. So uh, scheme. Scheme is uh, another important thing I wanted to talk about. Scheme is a standard for user provisioning. It's a well-defined REST API uh, with a um, JSON message format. So Scheme is implemented by many uh, service providers and SaaS applications in the world today. So it's used for cross-domain identity provisioning. So uh, people in uh, salesforce.com can be provisioned into some other system via Scheme uh, APIs. So, um, Scheme is implement Scheme 1.1 is implemented in Identity Server. So um, this is the provisioning uh, story of uh, um, our design. So we uh, have this. Okay, we have this. Uh, we have this. Uh, orange line from internal LDAP to external LDAP. This is to provision the internal users to external LDAP in order for them to be able to access support Jira. And then uh, uh, this line, this line is where in internal, uh, uh, when, uh, this is, this, when an infra guy adds a person to internal LDAP, Right now, we do it via L my PHP, my LDAP ad admin. We don't want to do that. We want him to go to um, accounts.apps.wsru.com and add him there from the identity UI. When he's added from this UI, he will be provisioned into the internal LDAP, and there's no syncing. There will be a listener listening on for use additions and adding him straight away to the external LDAP via scheme, because identity server supports scheme. So that is the orange line from internal L IDP to the external IDP. So we have one provisioning going on from here to here. So there are several cloud systems involved, right? So in last Q3, we, only, we did not have Conquer and People HR. Now we have Conquer and People HR. We want provisioning to happen when we add a, add a person to internal LDAP. Auto provisioning will happen for that person to Google Apps, okay, Google Apps, and then conquer. Since the person has already gone through the interview process, he's seen people HR system anyway. So we don't need to provision him to the people HR. So the in infrastructure people don't have to go and manually provision this person everywhere. 
right? We want to go on to um, additional steps in future where if he's a salesperson, we might want to approach him to Salesforce. We already have a Salesforce connector, but right now there is a concern because we have s only 60 Salesforce accounts and we don't want to auto provision people into those 60 Salesforce accounts, right? So we can easily do that. We all have, I have out of the box, box Salesforce a connector. So that's the provisioning story. And profile updates is the other one. The way, the way you can, the moment you can add profiles, we have need to provide them a way to update profiles. So update profiles happens via dot com side, right? Drupal. Drupal is where we host uh, dot com. We want people to log into wsu.com and update their profile information. So uh, if it is an internal p employee, we'll be updating the internal, uh, okay, that line is missing, but that's fine. We will be. Uh, we want to aim to update profiles here. If he's a external person, we will be updating here using both scheme standards. Just by calling scheme, right? So, why did why are we trying to stop syncing and go for provisioning? That's another interesting question that we wanted. We wanted, like, that is another interesting question we asked before we designed the system. LDAPs are synced periodically. It's like, LDAP syncing is pretty easy. The moment you want to authenticate a system, no problem. I'll put LDAP there, I'll sync it up. So there are so many LDAPs lying around, syncing, being synced from this one to this one, and credentials are everywhere, right? We don't want that happening. We want our LDAPs to be securely in one place or in several places that are under our control. And therefore, provisioning is much more easy. If you look at the current structure of applications, applications, most applications today can work without credentials. They don't need to keep credentials. They are written to trust a trusted third party. They are written to work with the IDP. They can maintain passwords if it is required, but if you configure it with the third party IDP, it can work with it. And if you provision a user and SSO him into the application, that application no longer needs to maintain a password and you are using the same password in the LDAP all across the applications. So it matches the uh, I applications are designed to do that, identity server is designed to do that, and the security best, practice, security best practice is that. So we just put it to the same place and we are going to have the best uh, identity solution in the world. So, um, and multi-factor authentication. So um, multi-factor authentication is something you know, something you have, something you are. So, Authentic at least using, if you authenticate using at least two of these things, we have multi-factor authentication. We wanted to provide multi-factor authentication to Google Apps. So uh, there were several options. One was to use SMS OTP. The other was to use TOTP. Google Apps has an app that provides TOTP on your, that runs on your mobile and provides T TOTP. But we wanted to support a situation where someone misplaces the phone. So we went with SMS OTP with backup codes. Generating backup codes for TOTP is not that easy because TOTP is time dependent. So if you lose the mobile phone, you can't really generate a TOTP token that is already in sync with Google, right? So let's look at Edgar again. Now he's, we think he's a very happy person. So he logs into all the internal labs using uh, his internal LDAP credentials. But when he's trying to go to OT Jira or support Jira, he has to authenticate again. Why? Because there are two domains. One is apps.wsu.com. Uh, the other one is accounts.public.wsu.com. These are two different 
domains, two different IAM programs, two different identity servers. So when his OTJira is on the on the public side of it, so you have to authenticate again. So we wanted to uh, solve this problem using an inbuilt. We can easily solve this problem using an inbuilt functionality of identity server, which is federation. Let's see the identity server architecture for a little bit. That's uh, there's, um, uh, on, on, on this side, we have incoming transports. On, on this side, we have outgoing protocols, incoming protocols and outgoing protocols. Our identity server is built to extract the authentication information from incoming protocols and build a generic model, data model, right? Build a generic data model out of it. So, say you come in from um, SAML. So we extract the requirements and build a data model. You come in from OpenID, connect. You request, you, the request is coming via this protocol. We build a data model in the middle. And from this data model and fr from the configurations, we make a decision, okay, the outgoing authentication needs to happen from the local LDAP, meaning Identity server is going to give you username password. Please enter username password to log into otjira.com. But we also have this outgoing transports. Please log into otjira using Facebook or Yahoo or Google, which uses one of these protocols. If it is Google, Google supports SAML and, uh, and OpenID Connect. I'm not sure that, but Google supports SAML. So we can connect outgoing authentication to any of these things, but we don't want to because we want to, what we want to do is, we want to do is, we want to make sure when Edgar visits ot.jira.com, we, we want to authenticate him with the internal IDP. When he goes to the external IDP, we want to authenticate him with internal IDP. That's all we want, but I'm just telling the capabilities of the system. So he, uh, we can authenticate with any of these th things according to configurations. So it's just a one-click uh, operation. We can add an external IDP. We, this is the concept of federation. So we use identity federation. That is mapping identities between different systems. We are mapping Edgar's identity uh, from internal to external system, right? This is what we did. We configured external, internal identity server as a federated authenticator in the external identity server. So we, as long as Edgar is authenticated with the internal identity server, he has a cookie in his, he has a cookie in the browser, he can automatically log in to external systems, right? So we, this is how we use identity server for fed federation. There's an additional orange line going from internal external IDP to internal IDP. So these are some of the authenticators that we have written, GitHub authenticators, uh, YAM authenticators. So we are calling the APIs to authenticate user against these systems, right? So um, now Edgar's happy, he gets a link to the ex internal IDP. The moment he clicks on the link, he goes to internal IDP. Internal IDP sees that there's a cookie set in his browser by him, by the internal IDP. So he is not required to enter the username password again. He's logged into the external system automatically, right? So now Edgar looks at the extensibility of identity server and all of those authenticators written for all the outside systems, he thinks, why don't I write the authenticator myself? Instead of redirecting me to the internal identity server, I, from the, when the request reaches external identity server, I'm going to check the cookie for checking whether I'm already logged into the internal system and then I'm, boom, I'm into OT, I can access the system. I can access OTJira even without 
my browser being redirected to the internal identity server. So that's, that's the story of Edgar. Now let's come back to Cathy. Cathy decides to leave abc.com. So what we do is we're going to remove her from her support account. And when she joins back to, then she decides to join wso2.com. So what we do is he's, she's auto-provisioned to all the systems and she has to maintain her open source profile separately. Her in employee system will be gone. Whatever the work she did as Kathy at abc.com will be gone. Whatever the work she did as Kathy at gmail.com will remain. But when she joins wso2.com, because of the reason that we m decided to maintain employee identity and client identity separate, uh, employee identity and customer identity separately, open source identity separately, she will have two identities to deal with. So this is the current phase implementation of the project. Green parts are already done. The rest are yet to be done, to be completed. And the future, we are looking at authorization of apps, centralizing authorization of apps. Thank you. <laughs>